Fiscal policy is the use of government spending, taxation and the budget balance to achieve economic objectives. And when we talk about the budget balance, we mean the annual difference between government spending and taxation. So if government spending in any one year was £800 billion, but we've only got £750 billion coming in from taxation in a year, then the budget deficit would be £50 billion. If government spending was 800 billion, but we had 850 billion coming in in taxation, then we could talk about a budget surplus of 50 billion pounds. It's really common to get budget deficit confused with the national debt, which is the total accumulated government borrowing. So not just the difference in one year, but the accumulation of all the borrowing to cover these deficits over time. We can use fiscal policy to tackle microeconomic policy aims, so correcting market failures by taxing cigarettes or spending on healthcare. But what we're really interested in here is using fiscal policy to meet macroeconomic objectives, keeping inflation low and stable, reducing unemployment, boosting real GDP, or achieving stability on the balance of payments. First, we'll take a run through of the different types of taxes which are used as part of these fiscal policies. So we make a clear distinction between direct and indirect taxes. Direct taxes being taxes that are levied on incomes. So income tax, taxed on individual earnings, and corporation tax, taxed on business profits, are both examples of direct taxes. The tax is taken directly out of the income or the profit earned. Indirect taxes are levied on expenditure, so VAT and excise duties are examples of this type of tax. You do actually see the money first, but then pay the tax when you buy products or services. We can also categorise taxes by their impact on levels of inequality and who shoulders the greatest burden of the tax. Regressive taxes take a higher proportion from those on lower incomes. VAT is a regressive tax. And while the rate of VAT is the same for everyone, 20% tax on each purchase for someone who earns £20,000 a year is a much bigger chunk of their income than it is for someone who earns £200,000 a year. And so for this reason, indirect taxes tend to be more regressive. Progressive taxes take a higher proportion from those on higher incomes. So, for example, income tax in the UK is more progressive. Everyone gets a tax free allowance. Then the basic rate of income tax of 20 percent is paid on all earnings between the, the personal allowance and around 50 grand, although this is changing all the time because of inflation. The higher rate of 40 percent is paid on the next next tranche of income up to £150,000 and the additional rate of 45% is paid on income earned over and above this. So this taking a higher percentage of higher earners makes it a progressive tax. Proportional taxes take the same proportion regardless of income. So if we were to set a flat rate of 20% on all income earned, that would make it a proportional tax. In terms of how this tax revenue is actually spent, there's a huge range of different things that governments could spend this money on. By far the biggest in the UK is social protection, and that covers a range of spending on things like pensions and welfare benefits. And then you've got health, education, debt interest payments, military defence, public order, so policing, housing, transport, just to give a few examples of some of the real major areas of expenditure. Now we can also draw a distinction between two main categories of government expenditure, and that is current and capital spending. Current expenditure is short term spending on day to day running costs. So that would be things like teachers wages or energy costs in hospitals. And capital expenditure is more long term spending on fixed assets which are going to provide returns into the future. So that will be spending on things like new schools or hospitals. In terms of the government using fiscal policy, the changing levels of taxation or government spending to achieve macroeconomic objectives, 
It's generally a demand side policy. So that means it works by influencing aggregate demand. Expansionary fiscal policy or inflationary fiscal policy works by increasing government spending or reducing taxation. So this will push the budget position towards deficit and the expectation would be to stimulate aggregate demand. Increasing aggregate demand shifts the curve to the right and you can see on the diagram that real GDP should rise, which will help to get more people into jobs and reduce unemployment. Downside to this, you can see its price level also rises, so you have to cope with rising inflation as a consequence. Contractionary or deflationary fiscal policy is about reducing government spending or increasing taxation. So that pushes the budget position more towards a surplus. That will reduce aggregate demand. The aggregate demand curve shifts to the left and the drop in price level you can see on the diagram means that it helps to keep inflation under control. Also, the lower expenditure from falling aggregate demand means less spending on imports and these contractionary policies can therefore also be used to correct a current account deficit. The trade-off would be falling real GDP and rising unemployment, which you can see on the x-axis. It is worth being aware that while fiscal policy is predominantly seen as working on the demand side, there will inevitably be supply side impacts of changes in government spending and taxation as well. So if rising government spending is put into infrastructure projects, increasing the productive capacity of the economy, that would increase long run aggregate supply. If an increase in corporation tax discouraged businesses from investing, that could decrease long run aggregate supply by reducing the capital stock.